How is the next generation air dominance NGAD, project going? NGAD is designed to produce a next generation fighter, replacing much of the Air Force's legacy fleet and bringing a new set of capabilities to the long range strike mission. NGAD is also expected to revolutionize the Defense Industrial Base, DBA, and change the way the United States builds and buys fighters. However, there are some obvious problems. The Air Force appears to be backing out of its commitment to NGAD, and the entire project seems to have left the DBA without a hope. Does NGAD have a future, or are we witnessing the end of the manned air superiority fighter? NGAD, what is it? NGAD is intended to be a long-range, stealthy penetration aircraft designed to fly and fight in airspace that is not just contested but actively owned by adversaries. Like the B-21 and F-35, NGAD is supposed to act as a communications and sensor hub, helping to direct capabilities from outside the contested airspace drones, long-range missiles, to targets inside the bubble. That's a different mission than the F-22 Raptor but NGAD is still expected to replace the Raptor in the Air Force's fleet over the next few decades. NGAD is also supposed to play nice with Collaborative Combat Aircraft, CCA, or, Loyal Wingman, drones, which would carry weapons and perform a variety of other missions to support deep penetration efforts. NGAD, less F-35, more Toyota Camry. NGAD is more than just an aircraft, though, it's an idea to reshape the way the U.S. acquires fighter jets. NGAD has long been identified with Will Roper, the former Air Force acquisition chief. In Roper's vision, NGAD would look less like an F-35 and more like a Toyota Camry. The former is built to exacting specifications that are very difficult to change or update, requiring an industrial infrastructure and workforce designed around precision and repeatability. The latter is updated annually, and key components of the system could be used on the CN or any other platform the company needs to produce. Roper envisions a gap made possible by sophisticated design software and modern manufacturing techniques, between design and production, ultimately breaking the monopoly of the major aerospace companies over the entire life cycle of a fighter. Roper explicitly cites the Air Force's experience with the Century Series, a family of fighters that served in the early jet age, in his description of what the NGAD program might look like. The NGAD program appeared to be making good progress during the first half of last year. Three demonstrators were built, and a competition for the prime contract was launched. Air Force officials began to express uncertainty about the project's future. The program is now on hold. Why did NGAD fail? Projects like NGAD fail for several reasons. Strategic circumstances can change, key technologies can evolve in unexpected ways, the economics of the project may never come together. There are indications that the latter two problems could befall NGAD. Current cost projections list the aircraft at around $255 minus $300 million, roughly three times the price of an F-35. The plan to bypass the American Defense Industrial Base is, unsurprisingly, less popular with the American Defense Industrial Base. Given the nature of the program producing a variety of aircraft of varying specifications, it seems highly unlikely that there will be any returns to scale in terms of maintenance costs. Different aircraft will require different parts and different maintenance. Experience in the Russo-Ukrainian War, admittedly at a much lower technological level, has not shown much promise for manned aircraft penetration deep into contested airspace. Indeed, the widespread use of drones in that war for a wide variety of missions may have cooled the Navy and Air Force's enthusiasm for another generation of very expensive manned fighters. What happens now? We don't yet have a full perspective on the NGAD project. Perhaps asking for a new fighter while the F-35 is still relatively early in its production life is a bit much. It wouldn't be too surprising if a project explicitly patterned around the Century series of fighters ended in total disaster. The Century series itself was a bit of a disaster, producing some good fighters, some flying coffins, and some jets that were obsolete by the time of their test flights. But it's too early to say that the project is doomed to failure. The complexities of service politics and the relationship between Congress and the Defense Department make it difficult to predict NGAD's future. That said, 
There's no doubt that NGAD is in a less solid position today than it was a year ago.